church, I want to talk to your spirit. There is a confusion in the body of Christ. The difference between the house and the resident in the house. God has made us in his likeness. God has made us as he is. We are made in the image of God. God manifests himself in three ways. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are spirit, soul, and Lord, Son. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, and our Master. Father, we thank you how you watched over us last night. And you allow us to rise this morning to see a brand new day. You place in our hearts, Lord, the desire to come to the house of prayer. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are not here alone, but you are here. And we are fellowshipping with our brothers and our sisters, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you would allow, oh God, your divine purpose in our lives to be realized. Help us to live in our purpose, live out our purpose. Help us, Lord God, to serve you, Lord, in the beauty of holiness. Help us, Lord, that our lives would please you and that we would do those things that would bring praise and glory to your name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning, oh God, that there are any sick among us, that you would heal, Lord God, now. Reach out your hands and touch now, Lord God. Somebody need a touch from you today. Somebody's lost in their sins, Lord. And somebody need, Lord, salvation. Somebody's life is going in the wrong direction. And Lord, I'm asking you today to turn that life around. Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody don't know what to do, Lord. They are stuck making a decision, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you to get into their thoughts now. Help them to make the right decision, Lord. But most of all, let them accept you as Lord and Master. Bless us, Lord, as only you can. We will praise thy name forever. We ask these blessings in that name that is above every name. The name Lord Jesus Christ and let the people of God say amen can we say amen again amen. let's remain standing and open our Bibles together if you would uh, in the name of Jesus our Lord to the book of Corinthians second uh, Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 through verse 21 and the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3 through verse number 10, is where the Holy Spirit is directing our thoughts today. And I want to ask you now to keep your thoughts, keep your mind in house, because the Lord wants to talk to our spirits today. Praise the name of our God. He want to get right down to the nitty gritty of where we live. <laughs> Praise the name of our God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to verse 21, read it in concert with me. Read, put yourself in the text, let it speak to you. Read. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, 
who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3 through verse number 10. Read it in concert children of God. Let's read. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are in earth even in him and let God's people say amen. amen may be seated in the presence of our great God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ our Lord and our master I want you to be prayerful children of God for the next few moments together this is a word it's a, a word that God has placed on our hearts for this time for this season and the Lord want to speak to our spirits speak to our hearts uh, this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want this a question not the subject so much so much but who are you <laughs> who are you another question who are you in? Adam or Christ? Who are you? Who are you in? Adam or Christ? And then I want us to talk about our true identity in Christ. The emphasis, children of God, this morning is in Christ. In Christ. The reason why a subject matter like this is so important is because there is much confusion in the body of Christ, the church, concerning who we are in Christ and really who we are. Some people don't even know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, 
then you can be identified with almost anything. But when you know who you are, you are not a candidate for confusion. You are someone who can live life and live life in the full to the glory and honor of God. And this is what God really wants. Where we are in time, where we are in our experience, and where we are in our walk with God, where we are in the history of the church, it is important to know that we are more than a name. We are created in the image of God. We are created in the likeness of God. We are more important than we think we are. There is something very special about each of us. And that specificity that belongs to each one of us comes from our creator. You were special when God created you. You were special in God's design for you. You were special in God choosing you and placing you in his body because he wanted you to carry out a mission that was unique to you. And you were the only person that he was selecting for that specific assignment. Because you are not a copy of no one else. You had an original. Look at your neighbor and say, you had an original. <laughs> and in that you are an original, it means that God has a special interest in your life. Because there are people, there are assignments, there are things that are unique to you that only you can do if you would follow his direction. And in doing so, that your life will be full and complete. The reason why many times people are experiencing an overwhelming amount of problem is because God is trying to talk to them to get their attention to put them back where they need to be. And so sometime, in, instead of there's one bump in the road, there's a series of bumps. So that God can refocus, redirect our lives. Uh, and, and God wants us to elevate our concept or our perception of who we are and whose we are. How many here know that you're a child of God? I didn't say think. That no. I mean, you know that you're a child of God. Say, I know I'm a child of God. <laughs> now, that's, that's a good thing when you know that. Because there are benefits that comes with knowing that you're a child of God. There are things that God has already made available to each of us that know who we are and whose we are and what God wants us to realize and to operate in is operate from knowing who we are, knowing whose we are, knowing our real and true identity in Christ. When one does not know one's real identity in Christ, then you cannot achieve the potential that God has placed inside of you. You'll always be living beneath your privilege. God does not want any of his children to live beneath their privilege. God wants us to live to our total potential. And, and our potential is that, that ability or power that God has placed inside of each of us that gives us the wherewithal to achieve that which he has assigned to us. Everything that God assigns to us, he put the potential inside of us so that we can achieve it. This is why wherever God sends us, he makes provision for wherever he sends us. Everything is in place when God gives direction in our lives. Are you in the house with me? This, this morning, what I really want to do and this is going to be more or less an introduction to where I want to go uh, eventually, maybe a series of messages. I, I want to talk to the resident that live in your house. Uh, let that spiritually marinate for a minute. 
I want to talk to the resident that lives in your house this morning. I want to talk to your spirit man. Your spirit man. Your spirit man. In other words, I want to talk to your spirit. There is a confusion in the body of Christ. The difference between the house and the resident in the house. God has made us in his likeness. God has made us as he is. We are made in the image of God. God manifests himself in three ways. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are spirit, soul, and body. God made us a spirit. We have a soul. We live in the body. Most time when we deal with ourselves, we very seldom deal with the resident in our house. We deal with the house. Our house is our body. And in most instances, the house has more prominence and more importance than the resident in the house. You are not your house. You are not your body. You are the resident of the house, which is your spirit. But many times, there's an attention that's given to the house and not to the resident of the house. Your body is not you. My body is not me. My body is my house. Your body is your house. Your spirit, that's you. That's the resident of your house. And when God deals with us, he deals with our spirit, not our house. And many times we confuse what God is doing because we don't know how to connect with him because we try to connect with him with our house. And we don't come out of our house to connect with him who is really outside of our house but really comes into our house when we are born again. He moves in with us. And he attaches himself to the resident of the house, not the house. He recreates the resident. He doesn't paint the house. He doesn't, he doesn't put siding on the house. He goes inside of the house and work on the inside of the house and beautify the inside. Recreate the inside because he's going to lead from the inside. Not from the outside in. He's going to lead from the inside out. So it is important for you and me to understand how God operates. He's concerned about the resident of the house. And sometimes the house is concerned with just the house itself. How it looks. What it hears, 
but it feels. And those kinds of things minimize, it minimize our ability to be all that God intends for us to be. God wants to get on the inside of you and operate from the inside of you to make sure that the resident in the house is just like him. If the resident is not just like him, the house is going to lead the resident. Are y'all with me this morning? Stand up, Wood. That's his house. We're looking at his house. We don't know anything about him, what's inside of his house, until he starts talking. When he start talking, when he start acting, when he start reacting, when he start responding, then that's the resident of the house. But looking at the house, you can't know what the resident is unless something starts happening. And the Lord wants us to realize because from here on in until the rapture, the Lord is going to start operating in us to another level of spirituality because we've been spending too time messing with the house. And the house can't be saved. The house can't be saved. It's time sensitive. And every day is getting weaker and weaker. Praise the name of our God. But the inner man, the inner man, the resident of the house should be getting stronger and stronger day by day. Regardless of the house, the resident has to be strong. Praise the name of our God. And you and me, we have to realize that you're more than your house that you live in. So stop spending so much time with your house. Because if you get the resident right, the resident will fix the house from the inside. Because the reason why the house acts up is because the resident is disconnected with God. And when the resident is disconnected with God, the house say all kinds of stuff. Do all kinds of things. Say all kinds of things. Entertain all kinds of things. And yet that right down mean spirited. Thank you, house. The thing is that God said, look, you really don't know yourself. Because you really don't know me as well as you should. In other words, you can spend a whole day messing with your house and never give the resident of the house any attention. Because you don't understand how the resident operates. The resident is your spirit. You are, I am, created by God, a spirit. You have a soul. You live in the body, your house. God is more concerned with the resident of the house than the house itself. How do you know that? Because the house is not eternal. The house is temporal. The resident is eternal. It's not going to die. A spirit does not die. A spirit lives forever. God is spirit, so therefore he created us a spirit. 
And so our spirit came out of God who is spirit. So we get our origin and we get our beginning with God. And so in that God will not die, we won't either. So wisdom says, wisdom says, spend some time with the resident of the house so the house can operate it according to the dictates of God. You know why people many times just do crazy things? The, the, the resident is crazy. Y'all might not like me at the end of the service. The resident is crazy. How do you know that? That's what the word says. It says out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The heart and your spirit are synonymous. They are the same. So when, when the body does crazy things, it means the resident is out of order. If you, want the, if you want the house to act right, straighten out the resident. And the only person can straighten out the resident is God. The scripture is very clear. We read it together. We, 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 we're not going to get too far today. I can feel this already. He said, therefore, if any man be what? In Christ. If therefore any man be in Christ. But what's the rest of it? He's a new creation. A new creature. All things. You got it. All things are passed away. And behold. All things becomes new. So once a person gets saved, once a person accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there shall be some behavior adjustments. I said there shall be behavior adjustments. I said there shall be behavior adjustments. Christ cannot come into a house and attach himself to the resident of the house and the resident remain the same. The resident has to change. Why? Because when, when, when the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God comes in and attach himself to our spirit or our hearts, what's in the spirit comes in us. And the spirit comes in with love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Praise the name of our God. And he recreates us from the inside so that we all know how to act from the inside Praise the name of our God. When the house, for example, if the house acts out of order, it means the house is just acting based on the signals that it's receiving from the resident of the house. Amen, y'all. When you, when you see a person acting out with their house or their bodies, you are looking into their spirit. Those actions, those reactions are coming from their spirit. Coming from the resident of the house. Hello? In other words, We, we as, as saints of God, the Lord has chosen us so that we can represent him on the earth. And in the same context, he called us as ambassadors. We are to represent him, is that right? 
So if we represent him, we have to do the things in which he has ordained for us to do. Is that right, St. Tinkle God? In other words, any man be in Christ is a new creation. I asked you the question earlier, are you in Adam or are you in Christ? If you're in Adam, you act like Adam because Adam sinned and when Adam, in Adam all die. So if you're in Adam, you are dead and you're dead right now. And you're not alive. If you're in Christ, you are alive. If you're in Christ, then because Christ is alive, you are alive. And if you're in Christ, everything in Christ is in you. I say everything. I say everything. Not just some things, but everything. You see, what happens, thanks of God, is this. The confusion between the resident of the house because hypocrites always operate out of the house. Because number one, they are hippo and crits. Because they are actors. A hypocrite is an actor. They can't act, they cannot do the real deal. So therefore, they got to put on a performance. They have to put on what others expect for them to do but it's not authentic they're an actors but when the resident acts the resident is authentic because the spirit has recreated the spirit our human spirit which is in resident which will be commensurate with what the will of God is. When you don't see a difference between a saint and a sinner, it means you're dealing with a house in one instance and you're dealing with the resident in the other. The resident always change when the Holy Spirit comes in. If you can keep on doing what you used to do before you got saved, it means that you never got saved. Any man be in Christ is a new creation. All things are in your past. And behold, all things becomes new. What does that mean? It means now you're going to start living like the eternal spirit that moved in your house at your birth. At you being born again. And now life is going to change for you. Are y'all in the house with me? I, I'm, I'm trying to help us this morning. I, I, I'm trying to help us because the Lord said he want to start elevating us to the next level so that we can be a blessing to the body of Christ. Because he want to lead us from the inside out. So there must be a recreation from the inside. Are y'all with me so far? Go back to the book of Ephesians just for a moment. Listen to here. Look, open your Bible. Stick with me now. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. Look at what it says. If you don't have a Bible, look on the, look on the, on, on the board, on the uh, screen. Look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. This, he's talking to the resident, not the house. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us, the resident, with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Hello. Blessed be God and
and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all. How many? How many? How much is all? If you got all, do you need any more? Why? Thank you. You got all. Praise the name of the Lord. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. Where? Where? Heavenly places. Heavenly places. What do you mean by heavenly places? It's where Jesus is right now, standing as our high priest by the right hand of the throne of God. He's standing as our high priest, as our advocate before God the Father. When we pray, we pray in his name, in everything that the Lord has achieved for us. He says to the Father, I've already qualify them for it release it to them it is in the heavenlies this is why when we pray when we pray what we need on earth is already established in heaven so when we pray in faith on earth that which God has already prepared for us is in heaven so our faith in Jesus cause it to be released from the Father's hand in just a matter of time it's going to be manifested right where you are because faith is the substance of things hope for evidence of things not seen I don't see it but it's mine I don't see it but it's already belonged to me. How you know it belonged to you? You're blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I don't have it in my hand, but it's mine. I don't have it in my house, but it's mine. Somebody shout it's mine. Somebody shout his mind. Somebody shout his mind. It's yours because it belonged to the resident of the house. That's you. That's your spirit. The eternal spirit of God has granted to you. But you need it in the natural state because all of natural things that you need has a spiritual origin it comes out of the spirit oh help me Holy Ghost I'm working hard on this one y'all this is hard work here praise the name of our God somebody shout hallelujah in this place notice what he says again he says, according, verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him. What does that say to you, resident of the house? What does that say to you? It, mean, it says you are chosen. The Lord said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I ordain you to go and bring forth fruit. And he says, your fruit shall remain. And whatever you ask in my name, he said, I'll do it. So the resident, go get your stuff. Don't send the house. Don't send the house. You go. And I know you said, now how in the world can I send my spirit? Thank you for asking me. All you 
your spirit has to do is agree with what has been given to you. All you got to do is confess that whatever he says is mine. It's mine. And you have faith to believe that it's yours. And then it's going to be manifested. And even when it don't look like it, it's still yours. Because the spirit knows the mind of the spirit. No one knows you like your spirit. Your body don't even know you. Your body looks to your spirit to give your body information in revelation. I know this is heavy this morning, y'all, but God, I, I'm not pitter patting around. Praise the name of our God. This, 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 this is no walk through the days and message, y'all. We got to deal with your resident. Praise the name of our God. How you doing out there, residents? Maybe I should ask how your house is doing. You, you, your house is either tired, your house is either sleepy, your, your house is thinking about where you want to go after service. Your house is probably texting somebody. Your house, mine is cross town. But your spirit yearns for God. Your spirit seek after God. Your spirit want more of God. Your spirit can't be satisfied unless it connects with God. Nothing please your spirit but God himself. And your spirit get its information from God, not your house. I'm trying to help us. Your spirit does not get its information from your house. Your spirit gets its information from God. Not your senses. Your spirit gets its information from God. This is why it is important to understand the difference between the house and the resident. I hear the Lord is saying, spend more time with the resident in the house. Bring the resident yourself in alignment with the spirit of God. Because no one knows the spirit but the spirit of man. There's some heavy stuff, y'all. Look at what it says in verse 5. Having what? Predestinated us. That's not your body. That's not your house. That's your spirit. That's your resident. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. Hello. God has children. We are his children. We are made in his image. We are made in his likeness. That's our spirit. He wants us to be just like him. How do you know that? We were made in his image. We are made in his likeness. We are made to act like him. And the ultimate goal of God the Father is for each of us to become just like Jesus. Stick with me, y'all. Take your attention off your house and put your attention on your resident right now. You are the resident. Who are you? Whose are you? Who are you in? 
Christ or Adam? Praise the name of our God. Saints of God, our spiritual life is the most important quality of our existence. It's not the natural. It's the spiritual. The spiritual. The part of us that connects with God. Because when, when we are connected with God properly, he gives us all the other stuff that goes along with living on the earth. That's why he says, seek ye first what? Kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I give you all the other stuff as a bonus for just living for me. He said, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. Adoption of children. The adoption here is a legal term that you adopt a child, bring it into your family with all of the rights and privileges if the child was born naturally. So when we are adopted by Jesus Christ into the family of God, the same privilege that Jesus has, we have. Is it the same? Same access. Same privileges. The scripture says we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Joint heirs. Equal in terms of privilege and access. Somebody shout how they in this place. We can, because we know our identity in Christ, we can say to God, we can say to Christ, Abba, Father. Abba, Daddy God. Everybody say, Abba, Father. Say it again, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba, Daddy God. Daddy God. And you, you, you see that you see the supremacy of the, the figure of the father, and we see the, the 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 subordinate of a child. We come to God, we come to him in faith, we come believing, we come trusting. And he said, anything you ask in my name, I'll do it. To believe that Amen. he said any and then and reason he said any no no I, I no I, I messed up last night I I did something wrong I I, I didn't do handle that right and I got in this argument and, yeah. you know and I didn't do what I was told so I really don't qualify shut up That's not true. It's no, it doesn't have anything to do whether you qualify or not. <laughs> it's what Jesus has done. It's what the grace of God has done. You don't qualify for anything. Nor do I. But Jesus does. I told you you got to deal with the resident. When you go to God, don't go up beating yourself up. And dropping your head down and say, I don't deserve this. I know I did this wrong. He knew all about it. When he chose you, he knew you were mess up. That's why he came. He knew I was a mess up when he saved me. <laughs> so I don't have to justify and try to act humble and remind him of what my mistake. He knew all about my mistakes. I'm trying to help us now. So we won't be so sin conscious 
and realize what your new identity is. I've been adopted. How do you know? I got my papers. I got my papers. They've been authenticated by the advocate of heaven. Jesus stood for me and declared that I was a child of God. How do you do? He allowed his spirit to witness to my spirit that I'm a child of God. Because nobody knows that I'm a child of God but my spirit. My body can't tell me I'm a child of God. But my spirit can. Because my spirit is connected with God's spirit. And there is no separation and blockage between God's spirit and my spirit. And my house is limited. My house is limited to those five senses. So they ain't going nowhere. My spirit got information and revelation. All my house has is information and a little bit of education. But my spirit has information, education, and revelation. Hallelujah. It has it all that can relate to the three dimension of myself, my spirit, soul, and body. This is hard work. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not, I can't give it too much. I don't, I don't want to give it an overload to you. But I, 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 I'm de I declare, I'm, I declare. The Lord said he wants to lead us from the inside. And he can't lead us from the inside unless we know who we are and whose we are and what we are in him. Our identity has to be corrected. Our image of ourselves, our concept of ourselves, so that we do not minimize who we are in God. Because you can minimize who you are, not realizing that you're more than what you think you are. But at the same time, you can't confuse the house and the residence. If you don't learn anything here this, this morning, I said to you, I want you to know the difference between your house and the residence. Your body is the house you live in. Your spirit, that's you. You are the resident of that house. And you are more than your house. Don't let nobody judge you based on the house you live in. Because when all boils down, you know as well as I, I know that the thing that describes our house that we live in, which is really, really, you know, restricted in many ways. Because the, 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 the help me, Holy Ghost. Your, 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 your body is supposed to be subservient to your spirit. But what has happened, we have made our body superior to our spirit. And we use our senses to try to run our lives. Stop it. You're not supposed to use your senses to run your life. This is why the scripture tells us in all thy ways, acknowledge God. And he shall direct thy path. In other words, he, the eternal spirit of God, will direct our path. You lead us. From the inside, not through your senses. Because some things look good and make sense, but it's not, it's not good sense. <laughs> Amen, y'all. Sometimes sense don't add up. But revelation always does. Because 
revelation sees everything. This is why you can't make a decision based on what you hear, what you feel, what you taste, what you smell, what you touch. You have to make a decision predicated upon what comes out of your spirit that has been connected by the eternal spirit of God who gives you discernment. And you can discern what is right and what is wrong. And you can only get that through discernment or revelation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah here. Praise the name of our God. I can't go any further. I got more word than I got time. I declare I got it, y'all. I got more word than I got time. And I need, I need, I really want to finish this because your future, my future, depend on being led from the inside. Don't look at a person and judge them based on what you see with your eyes. Or what you hear with your ears. Or what you feel or you touch. You don't know the resident of that house. When somebody look at you and try to judge you, you can easily say, you do not know me. You see the house that I live in. You really don't know me. Look, look at your name and say, you really don't know me yet. No, 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 see, they can't know you unless you share yourself with them. Because when they look at you, the first look is just looking at your house. They can't see the resident because the resident is invisible. The resident has to be revealed. So don't get upset with folk who tell lies on you and try to measure you by what they see and what they feel. Just simply say, nice. You dumb. No. You're looking at my house. Oh, but the resident. Oh, the resident is somebody you need to get to know. Not how much time do you have? How much time do you have to get to know the resident of my house? Oh, somebody give God a crazy praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When the folks saw Jesus one day, it's all that's Joseph and Mary's son. Right. 